Hola amigos, que tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain. Day 38 of the lockdown, that's right, day 38. It's been a long lockdown. Now before we begin, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video, more than 700 comments on the last video. And again, a big thanks to all of the people that decided to support the channel through a small donation. You can see your names here. Now, let's get stuck into some of the news that has caught my attention over the last couple of days or so. And the first thing we'll have a look at today is that Spain is calling for a 1.5 trillion EU recovery fund to protect the internal market. The economy minister, Nadia Calvino, told the FT that richer countries should not be able to support their economies more generously. And apparently Spain is proposing to finance this 1.5 trillion recovery fund through perpetual EU debt. And the prime minister will be taking his ambitious plan to the upcoming European summit, but it will need to be negotiated with northern countries such as Germany. So as we can see here, perpetual debt is what's being put on the table by the Spanish government. And we'll see if the uh, Germans and the Northern European countries agree to this perpetual debt concept. So let us know what you think about this plan in the comments section below. Is it a good idea to get into a perpetual debt situation with your creditors? Now, the next thing that caught my attention is that the Minister of Labor, Yolanda Diaz, can only see black for tourism, bars and culture until December. She said there are sectors that will live with difficulties until December, and among them she cites tourism, hospitality, and culture. So things not looking good for the tourism sector in Spain, at least until December. And another headline here pointed out that tourism has become our greatest weakness. Can we go on vacation this summer? The best scenarios predict that national tourism will be reactivated in May and the worst at the end of the year. Now this has led to a lot of areas in Spain, especially places like the Canary Islands, Balearic Islands, Levante coast, Andalusia coast, for example, the places that obviously get the most amount of tourists in this country, they have stated their displeasure with this comment from the minister. And there needs to be some measures put in place to reactivate the tourism sector in these particular locations. So for example, the president of the Canary Islands, Angel Victor Torres, said that hotels should reopen in July you cannot leave everything until the end of the year. He went on to say when asked that if he saw it feasible, the reopening of tourism projected by the government for the latter part of the year, he said that we must advance the possibility of having internal island tourism to regain the economic normality. Phase two would be to recover national tourism with controls at airports, and that by October, November or December, which are strong months in the Canary Islands, we can start receiving tourists from other countries. So a lot of areas in Spain are starting to challenge the central government on this and they didn't take the comments of the Labour Minister well. They want that tourism sector to be reactivated sooner than later in those particular areas. Now there's been a lot of stories circulating about fake news over the last couple of weeks and yesterday a report came to light that the Guardia Civil had requested reports of hoaxes that may generate disaffection to government institutions. Cadena Ser, which is a radio station here in Spain, revealed an email with instructions from the general staff to the headquarters on the fake news. Now there have been a lot of reports that the government is trying to crack down on fake news. They call them bulos here in Spain, especially from some of the opposition parties. One particular party is called Vox. They are an extreme right party. And we can see here in another article that Vox tweeters will face a sentence of up to five years in prison for their hoaxes on social networks. So five years possible prison if you are putting these fake news stories out on social media. And there have been some that caught my attention from Vox. One was a Photoshop picture of the Gran Via in Madrid full of coffins with the Spanish flag draped on top. And the government is said to be cracking down on this type of tweet and basically social media commentary which generates disaffection with government institutions as we saw here. And believe it or not, it's even reached this channel here with some of the comments that people have been leaving. I had a comment here from a person the other day that said so much hatred against Spain in this comment section. Some of them are subject to being reported to the authorities. Now, I go through the majority of the comments and I see there are critical comments. I see people talking about different things and giving their opinion. Another person sent me a message saying that all of the comments that I'm getting are from bots. 
they're not real people. Now it could be true, there could be some comments in the comment section that are generated by bots, but in my opinion, the majority are not from bots. Now speaking of bots, the health ministry has found itself embroiled in a scandal relating to its Facebook page. And we can see here that the health ministry claims to be a victim of bots that extol its Facebook account. Several of the latest publications in the official account of the ministry have numerous positive reactions carried out by non-human users. Health has reported it to the social network itself, which is already investigating it. Now, this is quite interesting because I don't know if you are aware or not, but you can buy likes on Facebook. Basically, if you give Facebook money, they can give you likes. So it's still not clear whether the Ministry of Health is trying to boost its reputation or if another group is trying to make them look bad. And if you go to one of the posts on Facebook in question, you can see that it has 27,000 likes. And if you click on the people that like the post, you can see that there's a lot of strange names. For example, Courtney Satt, Melody Halter, Lizzie Halpern, and Evelyn Mujali. And if you click on one of these particular profiles, we can see here Lizzie or Melody, they're all young, attractive women. If we click on Evelyn, we can see that her profile was created on the 17th of April, about four days ago. So it's not clear whether somebody has orchestrated a bot attack against the ministry or whether, as I said, they have decided to buy these likes in order to improve their public image. Now, another thing that caught my attention regarding the work situation is that the government is considering expanding teleworking by two months and the temporary redundancy plan to essential sectors, basically meaning that people won't be able to go back to their offices for a further two months once this state of alarm is finished. So that'll lead us into the summer months and we'll probably have to wait and see in September whether people are allowed to go back to their offices or not. And finally, one here related to some of the relaxing of the lockdown rules. Remember the other day we said that children from the 27th of this month will be allowed to do some type of exercise. We can see here that this will be the outings of the children, about 30 minutes a day, but without going to the park or wearing masks. So they're going to be able to go outside, maybe go for a walk, but they're not going to be allowed to go to areas where children congregate, for example, kiddies parks and things along those lines. And they're not going to be forced to wear masks because as we know, it's difficult to get masks to fit children. The government has developed a protocol with virologists, pediatricians and psychologists and experts advocate short works in specific time bands close to home and without discriminating by age. So some good news there for people with kids that they are going to be able to go outside and stretch their legs as of next Monday, hopefully. Now, let's have a look at some of the comments. Now, the first comment here from a name that I can't even pronounce, it is, will Spain recover and still be a good country to live in? Well, to be honest, I'm optimistic that Spain will recover one day and it will still be a good country to live in. Remember that a lot of the fundamentals are still going to be the same. For example, the climate is still going to be good. So that's always going to be an attraction for a lot of people. I guess it will depend on when the economy recovers, how the economy recovers and what post-crisis Spain looks like. But I'm optimistic that it still will be a good country to live in. Of course, depending on your circumstances, I always say that Spain is not a good country to work on. So if you're looking to come to Spain to work, probably forget about it. But if you are retired and you are looking to come to a place like Spain, I can't see that it's going to change too much in that regard. But again, if you've got a comment, please leave it in the section below. What's your opinion on that? Another one here from Biaha Moto. Thanks for your channel. We are two US travelers currently in lockdown near Cartagena. I know travel and tourism is low on the priority for many, but do you have any insights to when tourism will begin again? Now, I said in the video earlier there, Biajamoto, that uh, tourism most likely, according to some ministers, won't reactivate until the end of the year. There's going to be a lot of sectors that might not be able to open according to the central government. And of course, if they have their way, that will be the case, maybe until November, December for a lot of bars, restaurants, hotels, etc. There is a push, as I mentioned, from some of the autonomous communities to open those sectors before. But of course, they're going to have to coordinate with the central government with regard to this. And again, tourism is a very important part of the economy here in Spain. So I think there's going to be a strong push from a lot of sectors to try to get some type of activity up and running over the next few months. But again, we'll have to wait and see how this pans out. Another one here from Matthew. He says, appreciate your update videos in the United States. Most areas still have a good deal of freedom despite stay at home orders. I've been wondering if it's worth keeping flight plans to Spain for late September, October. 
I find myself more discouraged about international travel each day, especially with what the new normal may involve. Yeah, I said the other day that my parents were planning to come to Spain in September, but uh, I told them that it's probably better to postpone that trip until next year until we have an idea of what's happening. I think a lot of countries are going to have travel bans for the near future. I don't know whether people are going to be able to travel to other countries, even in the European Union. I don't know whether we're going to be able to travel to other countries if you're not a resident or a citizen of those countries. For example, is Portugal going to open its borders up with Spain again? Is France going to open up its borders? Is Germany going to open up its borders and have people travel there from countries like Spain or countries like Italy? I don't know. Are people from the USA going to be able to hop on a flight and come to Europe? Is the European Union going to allow them to come in? Those are the questions that aren't really clear yet. I would like to think that for September, October, these things are going to be relaxed. But of course, this information is changing every day. So at this stage, not really clear on what the situation is going to be like in September or October. Another one here from David. He says, Hi Stuart, many thanks for the very informative videos throughout this pandemic. I'm living in the Canary Islands and simply cannot understand why the government is not letting people out to exercise. I understand that the restrictions on children will be lifted on the 27th, so why not adults? We are all people. I don't understand the messages coming from the mainland government, especially here in the islands where the cases and deaths have been minimal. I think many people will have second thoughts about their future residency plans after this is all over. Yeah, thanks, David. That has been quite a popular topic in the comments over the last few videos. A lot of people are complaining about Spain and how heavy handed this lockdown is. People in the Canary Islands don't understand it. People in the Balearic Islands don't understand it. Even people in rural Galicia or rural Andalusia don't understand why we are suffering so much when the main focus of the problem is in Madrid. And uh, to tell you the truth, I have trouble to understand that as well. I can understand that in big cities we need to be stricter, but I think the central government needs to reassess and allow some of the other areas to ease their restrictions according to the cases and each particular situation. So uh, we'll see what happens, but it could be difficult from a political point of view in Spain because a lot of the times between the central government and the regional governments, there's not a lot of coordination. So we'll see what happens over the next few weeks or months. And finally, one here from Rick, he says, Hey Stuart, I live in Canada where restrictions are a lot less severe than in Spain. We are encouraged to stay at home and only go out to buy essential items like marijuana, which is helping some people reduce the stress of living through this difficult time. We can also go out for a walk or a run, but who wants to do that after smoking a joint? Yeah, thanks for that, Rick. I saw that in Canada you recently legalized marijuana. We don't have that here in Spain. Uh, marijuana and hashish are two products that are still illegal here. You can't grow it and you can't legally smoke it and you do face a penalty if you get caught. Nowadays, it's a bit hard to get your hands on any and I can understand that some people would like to be using marijuana in order to reduce the stress aspect of this current crisis. But unfortunately, here we can't do it. So if you are in Canada or some part of the world where you can buy marijuana legally, smoke a joint for me. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. I'll let you guys debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. Hasta luego.